What's up, my comic community? My name's Cullen, and I collect comics. And today is uh, May the 4th. And so, uh, yeah, you know, the whole Star Wars thing. May the 4th be with you, all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my uh, pulls from the comic strip. The comic strip's my local comic shop. I always support your local comic shop. Uh, mine, like I said, is a comic strip. It's on Broadway in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. It's right across from the old Esquire Theater. If you're in town, you should definitely check it out. We're starting to, uh, today with Batman, issue number 900, as far as legacy goes. And it's actually issue number 135. But Chip Zdarsky, the writer for this, obviously. Jorge Jimenez does the cover for this. Uh, the uh, interiors are done by uh, Jorge, Jimenez, Jorge Jimenez also. And uh, Mikkel Janin, uh, pencils on it are done by uh, Mike Hawthorne, and uh, Adriano D. Bendetto uh, did the inking on this. It's Batman vs. Red Mask in a brutal Gotham that is that's never known hope. Can the Dark Knight overcome the terrifying infection that the Red Mask has unleashed? Only one thing is certain, he won't be able to do it alone. The conclusion of the best-selling uh, The Batman of Gotham is so big it could only be considered in an oversized 900th anniversary issue. Featuring the return of fan-favorite artist Jorge Jimenez and a wild collection of, the great, of great guest stars full of wild revelations and a new path for Batman. This is one issue you won't want to miss. Hmm. I wonder if Chip Zdarsky's done with doing Batman after this. Who knows? I hope not, because it's been doing pretty good. Uh, next, we've got the Batman Audio Adventures. This is issue number six. And uh, this has a cover by... Oh, Harley. This has a cover by... Uh, oh, uh, Dave uh, Johnson. And... Uh, the uh, writer for this is Dennis McNicholas, and uh, the uh, artist for the interior arts is uh, our J Bone and uh, Anthony uh, Marquez. And uh, yeah, Haley Circus reopens. Gotham is in chaos. Batman's investigations reveal that a monster serum has been leaking all throughout the city, and the trail leads back to none other than Killer Croc. Meanwhile, Robin finds himself face-to-face -face with Scarecrow. Nice. Next, of course... Wait. Hmm, how did I... Oh, yeah. For some reason, I... Uh, well, I'll just show you all the cover, because uh, I already did this book last week, but I finally got my Harley... Uh, regular A cover in. I absolutely love this cover with Zatanna and I mean Sweeney Boo obviously did the cover because Sweeney Boo does Harley now. So next we're moving on to Joker, the man who stopped laughing, number eight. And this is a Carmine D. G. and Minko Giandano Minko cover. And uh let's see who sorry my mouse is stuck. There we go. Uh, of course uh Carmine G and Don, D, D G and Don Minko Maninko did the uh, interior arts for this. Uh, Francisco Francavella also did the uh, backup story in this for the artwork, and Matthew Rosenbaum still writing this. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned the number on anything, but uh, that's number eight. It was number six of uh, Batman Audio Adventures, if I didn't mention that. But, all right, it's number eight on uh, Joker. And, uh, yeah, after getting hit by a train, the Joker awakens in Gotham sewers, being cared for by Solomon Grundy. While his mind and body are recovering, the clown prince of crime and his new sidekick learn they're not the only monsters currently calling the sewers home. And the second Joker has set a course to find... Or, to find and destroy his alter ego. All right. Next, the last DC book we have, of course, is the f issue number 12 of Poison Ivy. I uh, love this cover, by the way. Uh, Jessica Fong did it. 
it's great. Uh, and uh, Marcio Takara is still the artist for this. Uh, G. Willow Wilson, writer for this. And uh, yeah. Yeah, issue 12. Uh, Ivy and Janet's celebrity wellness excursion comes to a horrifically tantalizing close as Pamela Isley faces the unintended fruits of her murderous road trip. Will she make it back home to Harley in one piece, or is Ivy going to be added to Glop's body count? All right, so this might be... I can't remember if this is a limited series or not, or if this is a... Done, but I don't think so. I think Carly, or I think Ivy might keep going. Uh, I hope so because uh, I really enjoy it. I uh, need to get caught up. I, or I'm only since I read most of my books on the uh, app, I'm still a little bit behind. I'm uh, when I get a little bit of extra cash, I uh, am going to uh, get the uh, ultimate version of the DC app where you can read everything just a month behind. Because usually I'm trying to get caught up on everything. That's the that'd be nice to just only be a month behind. But <laughs> I'm always getting new stuff, obviously. But here we go. Because I love books. I just love them. I love comics. They're so great. I love supporting this industry. That's why I buy all these different books. Also, if you're wondering why I don't always read the stuff I get, I just I love them. Like you know. Uh, all of a sudden, I'll get bored one day, and I'll be like, hmm, I wonder how that was. And then I'll want to read the entire run. So if I've already kind of picking up most of the run, I can do that. But <laughs> that's here and over there. We're getting back to this. Reviewing these, we've got the Carnage Reigns Alpha. There's going to be a whole bunch of Carnage stuff this whole summer, it seems like. Uh, but uh, Ryan Stegman did the cover for this. And this is issue number one. And... Uh... uh Oh, uh, Alex Packendale's writing this with Cody Ziegler. Ziegler, sorry, I don't know how to say that like that. Uh, and then the artist for this is uh, Julius uh, Ota. And yeah, uh, this issue number one, obviously, actually, Alpha. Uh, Carnage versus Miles Morales. Cletus Cassidy is back and badder than ever. With his soul trapped within the extremis, extreme be out armor created by Tony Stark during King and Black, Cletus has the means to level an untold amount of chaos as well as carnage on New York City and the entire Marvel Universe. But like any good Tony Stark inventions, the, ex the extremist cursing through Cletus symbiotic veins needs power and that means Cletus is hungry. Good thing Brooklyn's very own Spider-Man is there to stand in his way. If he survives their first encounter, that is. So yeah, Miles up against Cletus. That sounds freaking crazy. Uh, even though I know that's happened before out of continuity and some things. but Next, speaking of more Carnage, we have Cult of Carnage number one. We have the Misery issue and this is the first cameo appearance of misery liz allen and the uh apparently the uh, first appearance of corwin jones is what it's, uh, it's telling me on on key on uh oh uh clz uh we've got uh let's see the uh cover artist for this was uh scan Strizuan, I'm guessing is that you say that. And uh writer for this is uh Sabir uh Pierzanda and the artist for this is uh Francisco uh Mortorino and yeah, Death and Destruction Return Home. Liz Allen is the mother of Normie Osborne, who she is blissfully un unaware is the all-new, all-deadly Red Goblin. But what Liz does know is that the Red Goblin has been active and has been very close to her home, and after her late husband's father, Norman Osborne, maybe you've heard of him, gets pulled into the chaos and violence swirling around Normie, Liz has no choice but to use her resources at her disposable as the head of Alchemax to take matters into their own, to her own hands and become something 
the Marvel Universe has never seen before. All right. Next, of course, is probably my going to be my pick of the week. This is apparently the final issue, maybe, of Demon of Demon Wars and uh, that Momoko's done. But obviously, Peace Momoko, Demon Wars, Scarlet Sin. Uh, written by Peach Momoko, art by Peach Momoko, cover art by Peach Momoko. The Yokai are at war, and Mariko Yoshida, descendant of the Oni King, has to choose a side. And the fates of the spirit world and the human world hang in the balance. But things just got complicated thanks to the appearance of the mysterious... Yokai with incredible power. The Yokai has a scheme of her own and she wants to paint the world scarlet. You can't afford to miss this cataclysmic conclusion of Peach Momoko's Demon Wars saga. All right. I can't wait for this. This is awesome. I'm ready to. Um, it's, it's been so cool. It really has. I've really enjoyed de the Demon Days, the, all that stuff that she's done. But next, we've got Immortal X-Men number 11. This awesome cover with Storm on it, done by Mark Brooks. And, uh, it's, uh, written by, uh, Kieran Gillen, and Lucas Wernick is the artist for this. Storm of Two Worlds. Sins of Sinister is over, but the sins fallout remains. Storm cannot believe what everyone has done, but when the fate of two worlds rests in her hands, what can she do about it? All right. Oh, I didn't mean to bang that on there, but all right. Next, we've got Scarlet Witch. I love Scarlet. I love this series. Uh, I love Scarlet Witch. I mean, obviously, like a lot of these things I'm picking up because I really like them, too. Uh... Russell Dodderman did the cover for this. This is issue number five. Uh, a lot of cool things have been happening in this series. A lot of cool characters introduced. But uh, let's see. Uh, Steve Orlando is the writer for this. Russell Dodderman is the interior art also. And uh, yeah, when the Scarlet Witch thinks she's shielded Darcy Lewis. Just when the Scarlet Witch thinks she's shielded Darcy Lewis from her new enemy's vendetta... Scythia returns covered in armor made from the same anti-magic rock that Wanda's studying. Can Wanda defend Darcy and herself against the warrior who's immune to magic? All right. Next issue, we got Spider-Man number eight. And it's got a Mark Bagley cover. And uh, Into the Spider-Verse continues. This is the first full appearance of Spider-Boy. We've already had those cool cameos and stuff like that this last week. Uh, but, uh, yes, the End of the Spider-Verse continues. Spider-Man has changed as his powers are supercharged, enabling him to be the best Spider-Man he can be. But can his all-too-human body take it? A classic Spider-Villain, in fact, is back and doesn't care if Spidey has his hands full. All right. Next, how else could we finish this up? But with some more carnage. That's right. Spider-Man 2099, Dark Genesis. We've got, you know, Carnage 2099 here. We've got a Nick Bradshaw cover. Steve Orlando's writing this. And Justin Mason is the artist. From the shadows of Exodus comes the Dark Genesis. Miguel O'Hara, the futuristic Spider-Man of 2099, must face the sinister carnage like never before. As society begins to crumble, Spider-Man 2099 will need all the help he can get, but does the public even want his help? Or do they just want to watch the world burn? Steve Orlando, Scarlet Witch, and Spider-Man 2099 Nexus continues his journey through the world of 2099. This time-paired and bombastic artist, Justin Mason, from Spider-Punk, get ready for the debut of the new heroes and villains that populate the future. All right, so that's the end of all the... Uh, Books I picked up from the comic strip week for this week as my weekly pulls. Uh, 
soon, uh, next video I'm gonna make, I have a really cool uh, Vox I got from Torpedo Comics, and I'm probably gonna do that tomorrow. And uh, so yeah, let's uh, see what I got from them, and I will holler at y'all later. Peace out.